Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to explore the geometry relationship between this angle, this angle that's made with this horizontal line, and this line that is diagonal to that horizontal line, and see how the angle between those two lines are equivalent to this angle right here. So the first thing we got to define is that this angle is defined by these two lines, and this line right here can actually be, to be defined in any arbitrary uh, direction. So it could be a larger angle or a smaller angle. And next thing we want to define is this line right here, which is perpendicular to this black line that is at an angle with respect to this horizontal line. From there, we also need to define this vertical line, which is strictly only going up and down. There's no angle with it. So what we can say, if we extend this line downward just a little bit more, we could say this is perpendicular to this horizontal line. So now that we have that, um, I'm going to get rid of this angle right here because we're going to assume that we don't know that yet. And what we're going to do is actually look at this point in the, uh, in the diagram. So we're going to draw a horizontal line through that point. And what we can say is that this line right here, this horizontal line right here, is parallel to this line right here. So since we know that those two lines are parallel, we can use this idea of transversal lines. So if you look at this line right here, this line right here, and this line right here, we can see a transversal diagram. So what I'm saying is this. By looking at those three lines that I pointed out earlier, we can use this idea of transversal lines to define the angle in various spots. So in this diagram, we could say this is theta. So this is the same uh, black line that is drawn right here, and this line right here is this same black line right there. So now we can say that corresponding angles are congruent such that this angle right here is the same as theta, and that's just a property of transversal lines. So what that translates in this diagram is this right here. So this angle right here is equal to this angle right here. So now that we understand that, we can now look at another thing that was predefined in this problem. So if you look at this blue line right here, we said that is perpendicular to this black line. And if we know that, that must mean that this angle right here is also 90 degrees because that is, uh, this line is perpendicular to this black line. So if we look at this blue line, this orange-brown line, and this blue line, we can then find this angle right here. So the lines that I pointed out earlier, this is what we get if we're just isolating those lines. And what you can notice is that we can use this idea of the supplementary rule, meaning that if you have any line around here and you measure the angle from that line to the other side of the line, that equals 180 degrees. So we could say that this is alpha, and we can sum up these angles to 180 degrees. So we could say that 90 plus alpha or plus theta plus alpha equals 180 or in other words alpha equals 90 minus theta so we can actually say this is 90 minus um, theta so what that translates in this diagram is 90 minus theta and lastly all we have to do now is look at another at this vertical line and we know that this line, this brown or orange line, is perpendicular to this vertical line just like that. We can use the idea of the complementary rule for these two lines. So let me draw this line and this line in, on their own so we can isolate and analyze that part of the geometry of this problem. So when you isolate those three lines, this vertical line, this horizontal line, and this diagonal, so those are just this black line, this blue line, and this horizontal right here, we can define this angle right here. And that's just using the complementary rule. So I'm gonna say this is going to be uh, epsilon, for instance. So we know that this is a right angle, so these two angles, epsilon and 90 minus theta, must equal uh, 90. So if we just apply some simple algebra, so we could say that 90 minus theta plus epsilon must equal 90. So therefore, what we get is that theta equals epsilon. So we can say this right here equals theta. And what that translates in this diagram is that this angle right here is theta. And that's what we're trying to, what we're trying to look for. So as a result, what we can say is that if you have some angle with respect to some horizontal axis, theta, and you have this line perpendicular to this uh, so-called line right here, we can take the vertical line of that same point and say that this angle right here is also theta. So this is the fundamental result 
that is used across uh, physics, engineering, or any other science that deals with physical concepts. And what this applies is uh, you know, when you're doing engineering problems, a very common thing to do is defining is to define normal forces. And what normal forces are is that they're reaction forces due to contact. And we know that when there's a contact force, the normal force always points perpendicular to whatever the contact uh, surface is. So for example, if you have an arbitrary contact uh, surface like this, we could define a normal force like that, which is perpendicular to this uh, this point right here. So if you drew a line just like that, uh, we could draw an angle with, with respect to some horizontal uh, line, and we could define this angle right here, and then you draw a vertical line like that, we could define this very, very small angle as theta. And we could, and all, as you can see, this changes for um, every point of this surface. So if you draw a tangent line here, the normal force goes in that direction, and then we can uh, apply uh, the vertical point right there, so then this angle would be theta, and so forth, and if you define that as theta. So y you can see how this changes over time for any, or changes as you change position of a given surface, uh, the normal force changes, and you can define that angle with respect to the vertical axis by this angle theta, which is dependent on the horizontal axis that is arbitrarily defined. So this concept right here is so fundamental, I would recommend you just understanding it and um, maybe memorizing it. It's not necessary because the derivation is quite simple, but understanding this relationship is crucial when it comes to engineering and it is used for derivations as well as just simple force analysis. So that's it for this video. Hopefully this helped you understand why this relationship is true and I'll see you in the next one.